Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Morrison and I am an artist who specializes in realistic botanical colored pencil drawing. Today I'm going to show you how I drew this beautiful blue and purple hydrangea using the Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor Pencils on Strathmore printmaking paper. The first step is to find a great reference image. I went to my local nursery and took this photo. Then I cropped out the background and increased the contrast to create this final reference image to work from. Next I created an outline of the reference using a very light gray pencil. The polycolor light gray works well for this step. Here is a tip to get you started. You can trace the reference directly from your TV screen or computer monitor onto your paper. It's like a built-in light box. Next, I choose my color palette by creating swatches of color and comparing them to my reference image. Because I am drawing on Strathmore printmaking paper, I'm using that to create my palette. For this drawing, I use Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor, Delft Blue, Blue Violet, Deep Cobalt, Sky Blue, Magenta, Light Violet, Violet, and Dark Violet. For the highlights, I used the white pencil, and to increase the contrast in the shadow areas, I used black and dark gray. Because I am going to be using a solvent to blend the pigment, I tested this process on the palette. I am using an odorless paint thinner and a number no. 4 angular mini detailer from Princeton, and later in the drawing you'll see me use a number no. 2 Filbert Princeton Select paintbrush. Solvent breaks down the binders in the pigment and gets rid of any graininess that you might associate with colored pencils. If you don't like using solvent, you can use a colorless blender like the Rembrandt Splendor or simply continue layering your pencils until you have a smooth finish. Now I'm ready to start drawing. Starting out, you can see me working around the edge of the first petal using the light violet pencil. I found that it was easiest to work on these petals one by one. Here I'm using the Delft Blue to start blocking in the interior of the petal. This is a really pretty color that looks nice when combined with the light violet. Next, I'm using the white pencil to block in the lighter areas of the petal. By putting the white down first, I protect the paper from the colors that will go on top of it. This keeps these areas from becoming too dark. If I decide to use my electric eraser on this area later, I will be able to brighten it up to near white. I'm using dark gray to go over the Delft blue in the darkest shadows. You don't have to use gray or black in your drawing, but I found that adding the contrast really made this drawing stand out. After that, I will just continue to layer the colors until I'm ready to blend. Now I'm ready to blend the colors with solvent. The poly color blended beautifully, which is important to me for my techniques. While the solvent is drying, I started to block in the next section. And then I put the finishing touches on my petal. Here you can see me using an eraser to pull up some highlights in the brightest area. Remember that I am just continuing to layer until I am happy with the result. As you watch me work through the rest of this drawing, I'm going to offer up a few tips. Tip number one, I wanted a lot of contrast in this drawing and I really exaggerated the blues and purples and magentas. 
For the brightest blue petals, I used a lot of the deep cobalt, and to really brighten the purples, I added a layer of magenta. Notice that the final colors will be slightly different depending on the order in which you layer them. So it helps to practice on a separate sheet of drawing paper until you find the blends that you're happy with. Tip number two, it was important that each of these petals really stand out individually. I didn't want this drawing to look like a big purple blob. And in order to do this, I did several things. So first I outlined each petal with a really sharp pencil and these polycolor pencils really hold a nice point which is helpful. For the brightest petals, I used my sharp white pencil to indent the edges. The pencil won't stick in the indentation, making these petals really stand out. I also made sure that each petal was a slightly different color than the one next to it. For example, if I made one petal um, that was predominantly the cobalt blue, I might use more delft blue or violet in the adjacent petal. And this just creates some separation and helps each of these petals stand out. Lastly, I made sure that the shadows were dark enough and the highlights were bright enough to encourage that contrast. Okay, watch as I draw this little blue flower. I'll take a break from my tips here for just a second. After I outlined it, I blocked in the highlights using the white pencil. And I even indented the paper with some tiny white details so that those white details will stand out really well. Next, I filled in the main part of the flower using the blue violet. Here I'm using the electric eraser to brighten up the white details. And then I'm gonna follow that with the white pencil to smooth things back out. All right, back to my tips. Tip number three. This reference might look really intimidating to you, and there is a lot going on in this drawing, but this means that you can make a mistake and it won't be very noticeable. If one petal is slightly off or the wrong color, no one is going to notice. I accidentally made one of the purple petals blue and there's no way you can find it. So don't panic if something like that happens. If you break this down like a puzzle and just draw one petal at a time, even a beginner will have a spectacular drawing at the end. Tip number four is to layer the black and the dark gray on top of the blues and purples. That way you don't go too dark too quickly quickly, the blues and the purples will protect the paper a little bit from that black. And the exception to this is just in the very darkest shadows where I use black as my first and only layer. Tip number five is to consider getting an electric eraser because this will help you brighten up your highlights, and I use the eraser quite a bit in this drawing. And once again, here is my completed drawing with a selection of the products that I used here. I really enjoyed working with these Lyra Rembrandt Polycolor Pencils, and I am excited to start my next project. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Bye.